good afternoon or good morning. I'm uh, this is uh, Farshad. I will be talking about the mixotrophic system for super intensive farming. Okay, we talk about shrimp. So shrimp is very simple. We all know what is the shrimp, but what we are trying to do as a farmer, we always try to increase the carrying capacity of the uh, wherever or wherever and whatever operation we have. So basically there is a potential to increase our carrying capacity and always there is a environmental resistance that stop this going up. And there is always a uh, you know, way to increase this. So we have to look at what are the factors that can help us to improve and increase our carrying capacity. So to know that we need to look at the shroom culture system. Shroom culture system is very simple. We have a water and land, we have shrimp, we have feed, and we have surrounding environment. So if you want to make it even more sim simpler, you have a water, which we need the quality and supply. You have a shrimp, you need the quality and supply. You need a feed, which you need the quality and supply. Disease play a very important role here. They are the major challenges. So we have, uh, to me, disease are not only infectious. We have nutritional disease, we have environment and also genetic. And uh, water quality and soil bottom management is always very important if you are operating in an earth pond or even like plastic line pond or even, you know, indoor. Always bacteria, phytoplankton, mineral and feed management play a very, very important role. Uh, when you look at all the water parameter, water and soil parameter, there are many, many parameters that we can really, really long. We can write a very long list. But when you look, these are some of the very common and among them, I think uh, I will be mentioning about three or four of them that we are, they are very most important. So oxygen, it's become one of the key factor, which is the really the first factor to improve the carrying capacity. So oxygen involved in many uh, activity inside the pond from oxy, uh, they, o o oxidation up to the, you know, uh, produced by phytoplankton, consumed by phytoplankton, you know, by bacteria. So most of the, you know, the life uh, living organism inside the pond, they consume and they need oxygen. And uh, oxidization is very, very important inside the pond. And you can see uh, we have like ammonia, we have hydrogen sulfide. These are all, you know, will be affected by the oxygen level. So oxygen requirement in a normal outdoor farm, uh, it goes by the FCR. So you have a higher FCR, definitely you have a higher requirement of oxygen. And also that one also, it will be really uh, considered the higher FCR, more feed use, and you have a, a more uh, BOD in the system, okay? So then uh, you have, uh, the aeration system is the common way in many of the outdoor farm people use for increasing the oxygen and the number of the aerator and the, uh, the energy requirement also is very much dependent on the daily feed and the biomass you have. So we have always a arrangement of the aerators. So these are like very common. So what we do in Asia, <clears throat> we have a different uh, way of arranging these aerators. So we use different uh, horsepower, we use a different, you know, RPM and different location. So these aerators uh, are, you know, can be, we call it long arm or it can be a small one. So usually long arm aerator, they are more efficient and they are more useful in our industry, especially in Asia. I, I personally like the long arm one for the big ponds. So uh, I call it like aeration management. And then uh, you can see here, like some of the arrangement we have with the aerators that are different, different type. And, uh, you know, they are very, very important. And then the next factor is all this, uh, among all the parameters is a nitrogen cycle, among all the cycles, mineral cycles that we have. Nitrogen cycle, uh, which contain nitrification. It's very, very important. It's one of the key things that every farmer must understand. Um, which it will impact directly the culture and, you know, the health of the animal. So uh, in a nitrogen cycle, there are autotroph organism and there are heterotroph organism. So like you have uh, like bacteria, you have phytoplankton, nitrifying bacteria, denitrifying, blue green algae, and also all the consumer. So in the shrimp pond, the nutrient balance is extremely important. 
That's why we talk about bacteria, we talk about phytoplankton. So there is a CN ratio and nitrogen phosphor ratio. So this nutrient balance, uh, it, it will determine a lot of uh, stability or unstable system that we are talking in sodium pond. So the nitrogen cycle involves both of them. So you have carbon nitrogen ratio for process of ammoniofication and you have a carbon nitrogen process for nitrification. You have phytoplankton involved that you have a NP ratio and this whole process basically uh, regulate a lot of activity in the shrimp pond. Another two factors that are very important is the pH and ORP. Of course, we all know what is pH. pH is a logarithmic factor that usually uh, mainly fluctuate by phytoplankton activity, which is the photosynthetic, and also can also change by respiration. Uh, ORP is more about oxidization reduction potential, which is very, very important. Many farmers may not be very familiar with that, but it's one of the key things in, in shrimp farming, which can give us an idea about how we can increase the carrying capacity. So ORP will impact the toxicity of ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. And then we have alkalinity and hardness, which a lot of people misunderstood. Alkalinity by right has no direct impact on shrimp growth, but is more on the buffering capacity and nitrification and hardness. It's um, impact a lot on the shrimp because calcium and magnesium can be utilized by shrimp directly and also by the phytoplankton. You can see in a photosynthesis process, we have a lot of minerals involved, like magnesium is the center of the molecule of the chlorophyll and we have other minerals also that they are very important in the process of photosynthesis so phytoplankton are the first chain in a food chain in a shrimp pond and they are very important in terms of the uh, you know uh, regulating or you know impacting the oxygen carbon dioxide ph and alkalinity and also they are a waste manager and overbloom of phytoplankton always can cause problem. So we have to be careful. Many farmers, they know how to bloom the phytoplankton, but they don't know how to control it. So always moderate bloom is desirable. And then we look at in phytoplankton, the nitrogen phosphor ratio is very, very important. Common ratio, we call it red feed ratio inside the ocean is 16, which is usually apply in any seawater. But for the shrimp pond, we have different, different, uh, you know, sec, I mean, category for the phytoplankton based on the nitrogen phosphor ratio. We have nitrogen fixing, we have green algae, diatome, red algae, dinoflagella, and also blue green algae. So the best is usually I say NP ratio is 20 because it's a brownish green. And then uh, minerals, as I say, they, they play very important role in the whole system of the mixotrophic and shrimp pond. We apply in Asia a lot of magnesium, calcium, potassium, and also the ratio of them is very, very important. So bioavailability of iron are very important for shrimp. Shrimp can, can consume them and utilize them through a different way. Then when we come to the you know, looking at the, this mixotrophic system and microorganism classification. I put like a layman terms here, shrimp, phytoplankton, bacteria, and also fish and feed waste. So when you look at the all this, you can have different, different heterotroph, autotroph, heterotroph, autotroph, heterotroph. So it's a very complex environment we have. That's it's for the bacteria. So all of them, the phytoplankton management and pH management always come together and you have probiotic applications. So these are all the component of the important factor that impact mixotrophic system. So in the reality, mixotrophic system is the environmental modulation, which involve in pH, ORP, carbon nitrogen ratio for organic and inorganic carbon, nitrogen, phosphor, nutrient, energy, probiotic, and uh, phytoplankton. So this is the whole complex we have. It's very, very important. We have to understand this, how this one impact the shrimp farm. So you can see this is the stages of the mixotrophic system. We have three stages. So if I divide the, how the, the whole DOC of 100 over days in three parts, the first phase is going to be the phytoplanktonic phase, which is involved on phytoplankton bloom, pH, nitrogen phosphor ratio. This is the age that we have a small animal. So these animals are required to 
you know, having a very good environment. They need to be protected from the sunlight, UV. So we need a very good bloom of phytoplankton. But when we move towards the middle of the culture, we can reduce the phytoplankton and increase the bacteria in the system, which I call it phytoplanktonic probiotic phase, which is pH, carbon, nitrogen, ORP are very, very important. Then the last stage is the probiotic phase, which we have pH, carbon, nitrogen, and ORP. In this stage, you see a lot of uh, heterotrophic and autotrophic activity inside the pond. Which you can see here i have some pictures from farms around the world that they are working with us you can see here you have a bloom of the phytoplankton here the transaction period this is not good because this is more about the overfeeding but this is very good is a white foam on the pond so it shows that the the whole process done very well you can see here we have beautiful circulation beautiful water color and these are the ponds that they can carry very, very high density of the, you know, shrimp. So you see the white foam, this indicate the health of the system. This is the color of the good uh, probiotic stage. So sometimes people ask, is mixotrophic and bioflox are same? I can tell you definitely they are not same. Bioflox can be a part of the mixotrophic system. But mixotrophic system, which I have patented, is much, much more bigger and larger, you know, view of the shrimp farming. And when we look at the paddle wheel, you can see the paddle wheels are very good indicator in terms of the farming and understanding the auto farm. So by looking at the color, form, and the algae, you will understand. So the benefit of mixotrophic system, very simple. You can have definitely higher stocking density. In my indoor farm, we can do up to 2,500 piece per square meter. Outdoor, we can push up to 500. There is a definitely greater biosecurity, controlling of the uh, pathogenic bacteria. You can have very stable phytoplankton bloom, stable pH, ORP, and very close to the zero water exchange. And of course, zero application of a lime, dolomite, zolite, which I don't believe any one of them. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. If you have any question or any, uh, you know, inquiry, please write to the email address that you see here. I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you and have a great day.